You're listening to PoePolitikin.com. We got you stuck. Got you stuck off the realness. All the right people join together and unify. Take back our families and children, multiply. Show them how to live to the standard we die for. Teach them by God, put them first and ride for them. The devil been busy and he using the media. Destroying your mind, don't feed out the evil, bro. The story been told in the Bible, don't bite the out. See, our life matter, we just tired for being black. We way much more than the shit they broadcast. We just get dough, feed the family, and live laughing. Some work nine to five, the other has still trapping. Some treat our sisters like queen, other disrespect them. Our women got to prove to our men they more than set in order to get respect. The sister respect yourself. We all get in situation. We do what we got to do. But change it good. Don't let the world throw you through the loop. And yeah, I'm representing Columbia, Mississippi. Mr. Trio, it's Amar. And I'm politicking with my boy Poe on Poe Politicking. Politicking.com. Back to Poe Politicking. I'm now politicking with uh, my dear friend, the original white folks. How you doing, bro? I'm okay, man. All right, and I was. I'm, t- I'm great, man. So I was saying, um, first off, man, this is our third interview. We did the first one in 2008, and that's actually when I first started. So you was one of my, you know, earlier guests because I I started my show in 2008. Then you came back on in 2009, so we finally, I said it's a th- trilogy, so we got the third one. We got to give it to them, though, because they need this game, man. Uh, too bad we don't have the other two, uh, yeah. so that uh, people could reach back for it. Uh, oh. Because unfortunately, uh, you know, I rarely say the same thing twice. Uh, I may, it may be the same subject matter, but not the same thing. But when I was doing film, uh, somebody would yell, cut. He said, okay, wait a minute, hold on, man, I didn't have the sound right. Okay, let's start out with you. Okay, say that again. I said, you gotta be kidding. So how you been doing, man? Like I said, last time we talked was 2009. So how's everything going for you just, just off, you know, in general? Everything's good? Life is good? Well, uh, not good enough, but, uh, all things considered, uh, in view of the fact that I'm 67 years old and uh, the manner in which they have completely fucked up the game, I'm still managing to uh, be down and run. Huh. All right. So I kind of just want to break just some simple terms down for the for the listeners. You know, I think we probably got listeners in their 30s and 20s you know, maybe 40s, so we just general terms so they actually understand the game. So I just want you to break down the terms like pimps and players, like what, is, what does that actually mean? Because, you know, a lot of people say, I'm a pimp, I'm a player, but what does that, them terms mean to you? Oh, man. Uh, well, I, I just wanted to add to what you were saying, that I have seen uh, auto mechanics and uh, uh, all sorts of people. I mean, you know, got to slide from underneath the car covered from head to toe and crazy and said, yeah, uh, I'm a pimp. You serious? You couldn't be a pimp on a pimp's ass. Now, you are, you are the best there is at what you do, but pimping is not it. But now, you know, now, to get back to your question, uh, what does pimp mean? A pimp is one who accepts the earnings of a prostitute for a living, period. In other words, if you are not sending a hoe out the door to go sell some pussy and bring you back the money, you are not a pimp. Hmm. And, uh, you know, in this day and age, uh, they seem to love to say, oh, I'm something like a pimp. It's just, it's just like being something, something like pregnant. You know, I'm kind of pregnant. Either you're pregnant or you ain't. You either a pimp or you ain't. So what? what is a player? Just that stuff. What's a player when they say, like, what's the player? Is the difference or the same thing? No, it's definitely not the same thing, and that's why they have two separate words for mm-hmm. it. Uh, a player is one who uses his wit to manipulate people, money, situations, and circumstances to his benefit for financial gain. That is what a player is. So if somebody say I'm something like a player, that's okay. Uh, not not to me, but uh, you know that that could be argued. 
you something like a player. So you you kind of sort of use your wits to manipulate these things to, to your benefit. But a player does this for a living. That's where the difference comes in in being a player and something like a player. Because, you know, there's a lot of guys, uh, you know, I have seen and heard uh, over the years that say, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm something like a player. I'm a player. Uh, oh, shit, what time is it? Oh, man, I got to go, I, I got to go home and get some sleep. I got to go to work in the morning. Being a player is the work. So if you don't have enough confidence in your game and in yourself as a player for that to be the only thing you do to get money, you are not a player. A player is someone who plays for a living. All right. If your game is not tight enough uh, for you to believe that that's going to take care of whatever needs you may have, whatever needs and or wants, then you are not a player. Huh. And, and that, there's a serious misconception that a player is somebody who has sex with a lot of women. Right. It has nothing to do with a player. As a matter of fact, the less sex you have, the better player you are because uh, you're not distracted by your dick. Hmm. So being a player has nothing to do with how many women you have sex with. You know, that's, that's more like a trick activity because all you're getting is fucked. Yep. Now, seriously, how slick is all you getting is fucked? But I was going to say, so so like like you mentioned that, because I actually, I was reading this, I was listening to a book, and the book was saying like, like you, most men become more successful when they're older because they learn how to like have that discipline with they dick. So if you're in your twenties and thirties, you know, you got all that testosterone in you. So how can we go by like controlling that, which I guess would make us a better, you know, have, have our game tighter. How can we control that? What are some ways, things we can do? Control that sexual energy, I guess. Well, I mean, you know, as, as you said, it's, uh, you know, it's biological, you know, and, and of course, you know, and, and, and at a younger age, you have more testosterone and you are motivated by it. This is where uh, self-control and discipline comes in. And I believe that uh, uh, a big part of uh, the errors that young guys make are, for the most part, not really their fault because that's the drive. However, the the biggest thing I think, you know, now, now that I'm talking, I'm, I'm thinking about your question. What is the biggest thing you can do? Talk to an old player. Because most young guys, they, they don't want to talk to us because, uh, you know, uh, either, you know, half of them think that we don't know what the hell we're talking about, and the other half think that we're just trying to bash them. So they won't talk to us. Because, you know, I mean, it's like if you wanted to be an auto mechanic. Wouldn't you want to talk to some guy that's been fixing cars for 40 years? Do you realize the wealth of knowledge that man has? It's going to take you 40 years to get it, but you could get 40 years worth of knowledge about how to fix a car if you just sit down and talk to him about certain uh, major issues that uh, occur in cars. Mm. It's the same kind of thing. And there, there, there's no real communication nowadays between, uh, you know, the old school players and the young guys. Hmm. All right. And then I know you, you, we was ta- you was talking about this earlier a little bit, a game. And I know, like, I watch a lot of your videos on Facebook and stuff, and I was hearing you talk about the original book of game. So the rules of the game. But I was thinking that was a book or something like that. And then you said it can only be passed down from, um, you know, old school player to young school. So... What are some rules of the game? Like, I guess just, you don't got to, you know, you don't got to go deep into it, but just like, I guess some general rules that some people should know. Oh, man. I mean, there are so many and, uh, you know. Yeah, because like you were saying, like, the only way they're going to get this game is from old school players. So, I mean, you the old school player, so, you know, <laughs> we need it. Yeah, but see, I, I'm, I'm by no means the old school player. There's, uh, you know, there's a lot of old school players. You know, some some slicker than others. Uh, by no means do I uh, pretend or profess to know everything uh, about anything, and especially game. 
You know, as a matter of fact, let me just say now, somebody to tell you they know everything, you right. need to run right mm. there. Just break out running. Because that's a damn fool. But, I mean, it, it, there's just certain basic uh, basic rules, like uh, keep your word. Whatever you say, that's what, supposed, that's what it's supposed to be. And you may say something, and then five minutes later say, oh, damn, I shouldn't have told him that. Shit, I ain't going to be able to do that. But you said it now. So even if it hurts, uh, or as I did, you know, a conversation you and I had before you, you know, you started rolling, I was telling you that I was on the expressway and I was on my way somewhere, and uh, I seen the phone call, but I didn't want to, you know, there was so much traffic and so much chaos on the expressway, I didn't want to answer, but I said, oh, man, I told that man I was going to uh, do this interview. So... I made a U-turn and went back home where I could sit down and be comfortable and have it. And I just had to abandon what I had to do right then. I just have to do it another time. Why? Because I gave my word. Yeah, appreciate that too, man. You know, and and that will that will hurt that will hurt you uh, throughout your life if you become known as somebody who doesn't mean what you say. You know, somebody you know, say, "Hey, man, uh, you know, this or that is gonna happen." Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what Paul told me. Yeah, man. That's what Paul told you. Oh, that, that lying motherfucker. I don't believe nothing he say, man. He don't, he don't mean nothing he say. Yeah, I, I was going to say and that, too. And this be something extremely important to you. Yeah, I was going to say that, too, because I know a lot of people, like, I don't know, I think, like, the image of, like, when people think of pimps or players now, they always think of, like, you know how they got them, like, clowns beating up on women. But the original, I know, I know if you really look at it, like, they was already, like, the fly guys, like, the character, like, everybody in the community looked up to them, like, you know, outstanding citizens. But now they have this image where, you know, pimps, like, they all bad and stuff. Yeah, and, and, and that is, that is kind of about over the years and over the generations of the failure of new generations to talk to the older generation. So now... If if you, if, okay, this is how it goes. I know how it goes. Why do I know how it goes? Because the generation before me explained to me how it goes, you know. Some older guy would put their arm around you and say, come on, uh, I see you got some bad young know, brother. Uh, I'm going to help you develop that. And let you ride with him and see how this goes and tell you, okay, I just did this and this is why I did it and this is what will happen if you don't do it like that. And, you know, and over the years, that fell off. So now, if you're trying to do something, you didn't, you didn't, uh, uh, you know, because there's no book, there's no DVD or CD or nothing where you can get all the game, you know. Uh, some of us who write books uh, try to make people believe, oh, yeah, you, you have the whole game to read my book. That's bullshit. <laughs> uh, the, the, the game is way bigger than that. You you can't put it all in the book. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you need mountain climbing equipment to even get on top of a book that contains everything that the game uh, has for you to know. Yeah, I was gonna That's say how big the book would have to be. But I was gonna say I know with me, like, like I'm, I'm not saying I'm not no pimp or nothing like that. I'm just, I would say I'm more like a journalist. So I mean, like, I, I read your book, I read Rosebud's book, I watch all the cross countries, I watch the American pimps, I read the Mac, I read the, the Donna Goins, all that stuff. Do you think that stuff helps them, like, to know that stuff? Or Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, because, I mean, you know, and, and when I advertise my books online, you know, I, I have a little, uh, you know, one of my taglines, if you don't get game from old school, then where? Where the hell are you getting it? You're getting it from your, your peers, and that don't make no sense. Yeah, they don't know any more than you do. And then the, 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 the real dangerous part of that is that someone who doesn't know what they're doing, they're making up shit as they go because they didn't get it from anybody who actually did it or knows it. So they just make up some shit or say some shit that they think that's how it goes or that's how it went with them. So they'll do something that's totally incorrect. But, you know, it accidentally worked for them. So now... They will pass that on to someone else and tell them this is game and this is how it goes because they did some totally fucked up shit, but it accidentally worked 
and now they're telling someone it's game. Now they, which is the exact total opposite of what it should have been. And then the really dangerous part is that person that they told, they will in turn tell somebody else as well. And now you get a couple of generations of people who think some total bullshit is game, and then when somebody like me comes along and explains what game is, it's like, oh, motherfucker, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Because it doesn't sound like anything that they heard before. Because they've been hearing bullshit generation after generation. I mean, good good examples of it. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I made a big deal out of it and talked about it for a while. This was this was uh, a couple three years back. But there was uh, two young pimps in Las Vegas. One pimp uh, had got the other pimp's girl. He went to serve him, serve him notice. He told him, "Hey man, I got y'all." They had some kind of beef about it. They ended up riding down the middle of Las Vegas Boulevard. That's the strip in Vegas. On both sides of the street, having a rolling shootout like it was 1865 <laughs> uh, in Tombstone Territory. <laughs> uh, they had a rolling shootout. They were shooting back and forth in each other's cars. Three people got killed. Somebody hit a taxi cab. The taxi cab crashed. Uh, cut off fire, burned up the two people that was in the cab. So we ended up with twisted metal, a gunfire down the middle of the street. Uh, flames, explosions. Mm. That is not, what, how the hell does that relate to Pippin? But, but I was going to say. But I mean, there, there, there's headlines every day. Uh, half arrested, gets 22 years for uh, having two underage girls. Uh, I mean, there's so much of that going on. And then it says, uh, you know, National uh, uh, Federal Pimp Squad uh, strikes again, and they went through the city of whatever, the city of Denver, and arrested uh, 18 pimps and rescued 24 underage girls. And there was no such thing in our era as no National Pimp Squad that, that ran around the country looking for pimps. Why? Because we didn't make that kind of goddamn noise. Yeah, we did some loud flamboyant shit, but we did it amongst ourselves, and we did it in the hood, and, and, and it didn't involve no bunch of young girls, you know, underage girls, and there was no shootouts. Uh, there was no guns and pimping. I'm going to say... Uh, your mouth was your gun. Your, 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 your mouth was your dangerous weapon. I was gonna say, cause I always I hear I hear people I hear they always they talk about when they talk about serving, but I, I guess like how you were saying all that happened because they got served. So I just want you to talk about I guess the process of getting served, and then I, I guess it makes you feel pretty. You probably be pissed off when you get served, or was it like whatever when you got served? Oh, that one. Well, no, I mean you know uh, theoretically, you know you're supposed to just accept that. Hey man, this is part of the game. The same way. Uh, when I got out, I served somebody, and, uh, you know, and now it's my turn to come back around as part of the game, you know. And uh, there's a whole saying in the game, hoes don't come to stay, they come to pay. So, you you know, you better get all you can get while you got them, because tomorrow they might be gone. So, you know, that in the game, that's supposed to be, that is an accepted uh, part of the game. You know, because, I mean, if you think about it seriously, you know, uh, these hoes left their mother. So what makes you think they won't leave you? Your mother is the most important person on the face of the earth to any person. So if you leave her, you leave anybody. Hmm. That should be expected. But, you know, guys, now, uh, you know, and, and, and I, keep, I keep making comments like guys now. I want to make it clear that all of them don't do this fuckery. There are some young guys who really have game and really know what the hell they're doing. And I guarantee you that they were up under an old school player when they started. Uh, let me just, yeah, I just want to make that clear that all, all young players in the game, you know, uh, are not jack wagons and uh, doing this bullshit. Yeah. But. Uh, but there's, there's, there's quite a few of them. They get in their feelings, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like, you you know, you think it was some, some square guy and you tell him, uh, you know, that you got his wife. And uh, now ain't nobody going to be there to take care of the kids and uh, <laughs> uh, put his dinner when he come home from work. Yeah, I'll let you uh, go. 
you going into because I was going to ask you, you you kind of going to the next subject because I was actually going to ask you like what's your opinion of the game right now because I remember like now you got like the internet, you know, back page, Craigslist, so you know, and then a lot of you know, what's your opinion? Well, this, is, this is definitely you know, uh, this is definitely not the same game that I came up in, and uh, I understand that. But, you know, and, and I have a lot of these young guys, you know, that, that, that talk to me online, and then they end up saying, oh, man, uh, I don't want to hear all that shit, and uh, uh, this is the new age, we space age, pal. Uh, that old shit you know, they ain't got nothing to do with this. Look, we came up using what would, a, what would amount to or equivalent to uh, the Constitution of the game, like the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of the United States of America uh, is dated 1776, but it's still the law of the land. And it's the same thing with the old school rules of the game. It's still the law of the game. And then, well, now, you- it can, you know, there, there's amendments, there's uh, different ways to do it. For instance, you know, like I said, this is not the same game. And as you pointed out, you know, they got uh, computerized uh, sites and, and this, that, and the other. And uh, uh, and you got a telephone in your pocket. That, that was out of the question with us. Back in the day, you had to have enough game to be able to tell your hoe everything she needed to know before she went out the door. Absolutely, positively everything. She had to be laced up tight as fish pussy. And that's waterproof. Because there was no calling back and saying, hey, uh, what do I do now, coach? Uh, this situation came up and that situation came up. What, what am I supposed to do about this? They knew everything they needed to know when they went out that door because there was no, there was no calling back. I was going to say, so, yeah. yeah. But now, to, to continue on with, with, with the answer to the question that you asked me, if we had had access to something like the internet and cell phones, man, uh, the game would be so far ahead. Now, it seems like they're taking the game backwards and they got the, all the tools necessary to go a uh, hundred times further than we did. You know, uh, I could just see myself if I was a young person in this day and age. You know, Miles would hardly ever be in the United States. Uh, I was going to say, so what you think? They'd be online somewhere in, 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 in uh, Iceland or you know, Switzerland or somewhere. Uh, if, they were, <laughs> if they were black women, they, they would be uh, online somewhere in a country that don't, don't have very many black people. Uh, the white girls would be uh, uh, going to Barcelona or somewhere, the countries where they don't have uh, white people. There's all Spanish people. You know, they would all have passports. They would all be on international sites. And these motherfuckers got, uh, they're on uh, back page on the hood doing $50 specials. But I was going to say, what's your opinion of the ones, I know a lot of girls now, they just be, well, they say they are, but a lot of them be saying they're independent. Like, what's your opinion of girls, like, because they be like, well, I need a pimp for it, and they just do it independent. You know, and, and my answer to that is the same reason these young guys needed to talk to an old school player. Because you need, a, you need somebody, well, first, let me, let, let me give a simple answer to that. You cannot run the show and be the show at the same time. Oh. That's the answer to that. What do I need a pimp for? Okay. You cannot, you know, uh, for instance, you couldn't have this show if somebody else wasn't doing, uh, you You can't conduct the interviews, uh, operate the electronics, uh, do the sound, do the, the uh, all of this stuff that needs to be done. I'm sure there's more than you involved in making this happen, right? Right. Was a movement. <laughs> yeah, because you can't be the show and run the show at the same time. Just that simple. It's like trying to make a movie and you trying to be behind the camera and in front of the camera at the same time. It's, it's a physical impossibility. Hmm. Ronald McDonald don't sell no hamburgers. But he's a billionaire. Hmm. You, also know, you ain't never seen Ronald back there. Oh, welcome to McDonald's, may I take your order, please? 
Yeah. No, he's the CEO. He handles the business part of it. He handles the real estate, uh, where where these uh, places are. He handles the money. He takes that money and invests it and makes more money with it. Uh, he finds where to get better deals for uh, the meat and so on. Uh, he finds better ways to be more efficient uh, to make a bigger profit. But if he was standing there uh, saying, welcome to McDonald's, man, take your order, please, and putting hamburgers in the bag, he wouldn't have time uh, to see about making this a bigger, better operation or expanding it or uh, putting McDonald's in Iceland uh, or Las Palmas, Spain or uh, uh, Geneva, Switzerland or somewhere, you know? Yeah. Because he'd be too busy sticking the fucking hamburgers in the bag. So somebody got to put the hamburgers in the bag and somebody got to figure out how to make this a bigger, better... Popolitikin.com. The shit just, you know, it's just some ass backwards. Uh, it's an ass backwards train of thought. There's a CEO and a manager uh, of any successful business. Oh. All right. Just that them. So I just, we about to wrap it up, but I was just going to say, like, so I just want to, like, what I'm trying to do with my show, with the show is basically create a time capsule. So what have you? what would you say to someone... Like, 100 years from now, you know, we both won't be alive or whatever. We'll be, we'll be gone. Somebody else stumble upon this and listen to it. What do you want to tell them 100 years from now? I got, I got a piece of film that I, uh, uh, some uh, footage that I did uh, a few years back. It's never been released. I, I never put it out yet. I'm trying to find the appropriate means. And it was, it was two old guys, uh... They were in the 80s. And uh, I had somebody else doing the interview because I was one of the people that was being interviewed on this film as well. These guys were in the 80s, but they, they were old films. And uh, this woman asked them, if you had to say one thing, the young people coming into the game now, what would be that one thing that you would tell them? And they both, without a second thought, without even looking at each other, but said at the same time, in unison, keep your word. Hmm. It, 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 it sounded like one person talking. It, it, that's how quick both of them said it, and they both said the exact same thing. Keep your word. That's the number one thing. And I would like to add to that, uh, in answer to your question, to remember the first three rules of the game. Get the money up front, get the money up front, and get the money up front. Uh, so that goes to my next question, too. You kind of already answered it, but I always ask all the guests this. So it's kind of different from you, but I always ask the guests this anyway, so I'm just going to ask you. Um, if you had to pick one thing, what do you think is most important, money, fame, or love? <laughs> yeah, I already know what you're going to say. <laughs> yeah, money. Uh, you know, and and and, and uh, you you get all sorts of debates on that, and uh, oh, money can't buy love, and money doesn't buy everything. Hey, yeah, and you're absolutely right. I agree, one hundred percent. Money doesn't buy everything, but everything does that it doesn't buy ain't the shit that I'm looking for anyway. But my whole thing is. To money is actually just a concept because when shit go down, it's just a piece of paper. Like it's just a concept. You know, money is not that piece of paper is not important. It's, it's just it's what the currency. Yeah, it's just what the money now, can it, allow you to do. See, that goes back to keeping your word. Your word is currency. Mm. You can spend that. You can go somewhere and don't have nothing, and and, and tell somebody, look, uh, I need you to do this, this, and this for me, and this is what I'm gonna do for you. But I can't do it right now. I have to do it later. And you get it done. Why? Because you are known for keeping your word. So you're spending your currency. You're spending your word. Whatever the currency is. You know, uh, years from now, the currency may be something else. But whatever currency is, let's just, you know, let's just, for the sake of this conversation, say it's cash. Here's a statement that needs to be understood completely and totally. Cash shit. Cash gets shit done. Hmm. <laughs> Period. That's what's up. Just that simple. If you ain't got none, you ain't gonna get much done. Hmm. You can be as moral, you can have as much education or lack thereof, uh, but if you got cash, you can get shit done. 
And what would you like to say to your fans, people who have been supporting you? I would like to say that I would, uh, well, I'm going to make a shameless plug here. Uh, people always, you know, I got to ask a player, uh, those, those videos. I haven't made any in a few years. Yeah, I said, and, I, didn't, uh, I didn't ask you about your books, all that. Yeah, make sure you get that in. I forgot to ask you about your books and all that stuff. So, yeah, my bad. Part of, part of that is, uh, you know, I, I kind of got pissed off because at one point I had about 400,000 views on my Ask a Player, uh, videos, right? Mm -hmm. On YouTube. And, but I hadn't sold but maybe seven, eight thousand books. I said, damn. I said, now here's 400,000 people that, uh, get something, whatever, whatever it is they get, the enjoyment, entertainment, information, uh, maybe you think I'm funny, I don't know. But whatever it is, <laughs> 400,000 of them have, have listened to me, and ain't but seven, eight thousand of them bought a book. And then, I get uh, emails all the time. Man, when you gonna do some more Ask a Player videos? Uh, I, I love them shits. Uh, there's great information in there, man. I, I've watched the same ones over and over four or five times. And my answer to that is, when you gonna buy a book? <laughs> you know, people that email me, when you gonna do some more episodes? I said, uh, not meaning to be an asshole, brother, but let me just ask you a question. Have you bought either one of my books? Well, no, I've been meaning to. I said, okay, see, that's part of the reason why I don't do the Ask a Player videos no more. I need a cameraman, a light man, a sound man. I need a venue to do it. Uh, all this shit costs me. So now I got to pay in order to give you some game? Come oh. on, man. The whole purpose of this was for me to advertise my books right. and my upcoming projects. Uh, you know, I didn't expect all 400,000 of them, but if... if one fourth of them had bought a book. You imagine how much money I have? If I'd have sold, sold a hundred thousand, twenty dollar books. Uh -huh. I'd have two million dollars. Yup. But it didn't happen. Yeah, I was lucky to get five ten dollars now. <laughs> so, uh, you know, everybody wants some game, but uh, they don't want to invest in it. Nobody, invest in nobody it. wants to pay for the privilege. Yeah, I'm yeah. selling a million dollars worth of game for twenty dollars. So. In conclusion, because you said you got the end, my book, no, we Original good. Game, Original Game, is on Amazon.com. I have a, another book called Ask a Player. And the event that you uh, forget this, if you're hearing this, you remember at least this much. Go to YouTube and put in Ask a Player. Also, I have a court show, which I've done a pilot for, that's on YouTube. It's called Player's Court. I'm presiding as the game warden, and all of my cases come from the streets. They originate in the game. These are situations and circumstances and disputes that uh, occur every day on the streets and are uh, usually resolved by gunfire, or baseball bat, or a brick, or a wine bottle, or knife, or something. So I'm offering nonviolent solutions to common problems that occur in the game. For instance, one of the cases on there is a pimp suing another pimp for the return of his hoe and lost wages for the time she's been gone. I got a housewife that's suing her husband and a, and a hoe for giving her herpes. She's suing her husband under the uh, adultery laws and she's suing the hoe under product liability laws. It says she's intentionally distributing a tainted product to the general public. <laughs> I mean, the shit is funny, but it's shit that happens every day. How many of these tricks uh, go somewhere and trick off with one of these crackhead hoes, get herpes, and go home and give it to his wife? Uh -huh. Yeah, way more than you might think, because nobody really talks about that. Uh, I got a, uh, on back to the TV show, I got a 19-year-old kid suing his mother for illegal search and seizure because she went in his room, found his ex pills at 9 millimeter and threw him in the garbage can. And he's, and he's suing his mother. He said he got to get that money back because he's still old Pooh Can Ray right now uh, for the gun and the bill. <laughs> he said Pooh Can them sell guns, so you know this is serious. So go go to YouTube. Uh, check out Players Court. I got a film company uh, in Chicago. I have this wonderful 
uh, woman, Coco Elizabeth, uh, in Chicago, who's been, uh, she's taken my clip to uh, two film festivals so far. She's supposed to uh, take it to L.A. soon. Uh, we're trying to get on. I'm trying to get on cable TV with Players Court. And uh, the shit is funny as hell. It's real as hell. And uh, I don't see why I shouldn't get on. I, I've got two of the hottest things uh, going on TV. It's a reality show uh, as a court show. Court shows are uh, uh, hot. Reality shows are hot. I got a reality court show. Oh. With some re- real hoes, real pimps. Both are strippers. Uh, so I, I just wanted to get that out there. But hey, if you want some game, you want a million dollars worth of game for twenty dollars, buy a book. Original game. Ask the player. Go to Amazon. If you're in the Atlanta area, go to Nubian Bookstore. Yeah, I actually. Uh, South Lake Mall, next door to uh, 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 TJ Maxx. Yeah, I'm saying we actually got a lot of listeners in Atlanta, so yeah, make sure you plug that so they can go check it out. Cause I know I got listeners in Atlanta for sure. So you were saying where is that Nubian yeah, bookstore? I, I don't know. I don't know why people think they, you know, they they, they should get uh, this million dollars worth of game and not even spend twenty dollars. They go to college uh, and get in three, four hundred thousand dollars worth of debt to get these bullshit degrees, and then still end up working at McDonald's. After they get the damn degree and got to pay all these uh, student loans. Mm-hmm. And hardly any of them end up uh, getting a job or uh, working in the, in the field in which they have a degree. Hmm. It's impossible uh, not to uh, uh, increase your life's worth if you get some gain. Hmm. All right, man. One and sec- another thing. Oh, sorry. One last thing. Uh, as bad as the economy is and as bad as it had gotten, there's one thing you never saw how to work player. Yeah. Always work for a player. All right, bro, I don't, I don't want to run you uh, too far. You, you've been trying to shut me up here for a little while. <laughs> nah, we good. Uh, <laughs> nah, we good, bro. I just want to say thank you for coming through politics with me. I really appreciate it. Not a problem, and uh, you know maybe maybe one day uh, you know I might be able to talk to a few of my old school player friends and all getting together and if you get some guys like me and Rosebud and a few other people uh, all together because uh, you know just one person saying some people say ah oh, that that don't mean that's what it is just because he said it. but if they could see that just about all old school players. All say basically the same thing. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, with me, man, like what I'm really doing with this show, man, I'm really trying to, uh, like I said, leave leave something for the whoever, man, like a young young person, like you said, like they can listen to an older person. I'm trying to leave that game for them. So it's like all these guests are saying the same, you know, they basically saying the same stuff, telling them how to. Yeah, and then, then you got you got guys, you know, you got guys like Rosebud and Gorgeous Dre that have, you know, that have taken the principles of pimping. And uh, using it to teach male confidence, mm-hmm. which is a, a big part of it. You don't have to be a pimp uh, to, uh, uh, or a player or do anything illegal in order to get benefit out of this. You know, it's game. And that's what, and, and you know, and if you have no confidence as a man, uh, it's not very far you're going, mm-hmm. you know? Uh but uh, game helps everybody. And we're all victims of game. You think you ain't, you pay close attention to what the hell the government is doing to you. Oh, yeah. I say, is anything. You know, people who, people it, who don't do or who are not from the streets, who don't do anything illegal or anything slick. But just think about the game that they're playing, the enormity of this game. Think about this. You go to work, they charge you some money. They charge you taxes for the money you made. You made this much money. We're going to tax you for having this much money. Okay, now you get what's left. Then when you get what's left, you go to the store and you buy something and they tax you again. <laughs> on some money that's already been taxed. You taxed twice. Yep. Yeah. And then if you, and if you buy it on credit, you're getting taxed a third time. Huh. 
you gotta pay the income tax, the sales tax. Now you gotta, now you gotta pay the pay interest credit rate. card. Yo, Israel, yo. Is there anything you we tell me that ain't game? I say, was there anything that I didn't ask you you'd like to talk about, or we covered everything? Uh, oh man, there, there's a million things we didn't talk about that uh, that uh, people would like to know that I would like to say. But you know, you have time constraints, and but now, uh, I mean, you know, as it's... you know from the past, I've always made myself available to you. So you know, uh, maybe if uh, some of the subject matter that you think I may know something about comes up. At a later date, uh, give me a call, man. I, I make myself available. com. One day you want to hear some more of what I have to say or whatever. Uh, but, you know, just be in touch, man. And I, as I said, I'll make myself available. All right, man. I appreciate you, bro. Not a problem, brother. I, I appreciate you having me on, man.